we will call the March 24, 2015 Carlisle County Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Board members present. I'm Mr. Thomas representing the Mattapanai District. Mr. Black representing the Western District. Mr. Underwood representing the Reed Church District. Mr. Akers representing the Madison District. Mr. Seeley representing the Bowling Green District. And I'm Calvin Taylor representing the Port Royal District. Uh, Mr. Akers, could we have you to do the invocation at this time? Let us pray. Our loving and wonderful Father, as we come into your house, uh, into this place this evening, we ask that you would guide and direct everything that we as board members say and do. And we pray that all of our actions will be pleasing in your sight and in keeping with your will. We pray that you'll help us to keep in mind that what we do affects the people of this county and outside of this county. And we just pray that you'll help us to make the decisions that are right. Lord, we pray a special blessing on the families that were involved in the tragedy this past weekend. Lord, we just pray that you'll touch their hearts. We pray that you'll undergird them with your love and your strength and your kindness. And Lord, just help them get through this time of, of sadness and of sorrow. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us as individuals. And we thank you for loving us and blessing us as a county and as individuals. For it is in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. 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 Amendments to the agenda at this time. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Under uh, new business, um, oh, I'm sorry, old business, we had talked about uh, item number six. We had continued the discussion of relocation of the Don polling place. I've asked that to be removed, and I'll ask that the board um, leave the vote as it was on last, uh, last time we discussed it. Okay, so you are asking to remove it from the agenda? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, could you make a motion uh, to that effect, please? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we removed unfinished business number six from the agenda. Is there a second? Second. It's so moved and proper second that we would remove the agenda item six, uh, proposed rec relocation of a Don polling place from the agenda. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. Uh, poll, uh, Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Black? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Aye. Mr. Akers? Aye. Mr. Seeley? No. And uh, I vote aye as well. All right. Um, that takes us to opening board comments. Mr. Thomas, do you have opening board comments at this time? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, I am holding a district meeting on Thursday, like the other half of the board members. Uh, the Thursday the 26th at the Reedy Church Brewerton's at 7 p.m. Uh, I'm going to have our school board represented there, so we'll talk about the school projects in depth. And I believe Mr. Wilson has arranged for a Belmont announcement, groundbreaking uh, for the medical office building and Germana's temporary campus in Caroline to be held uh, March 31st at 7. That's the date we have, so we're going to publicize that. Um, we're going to try to do this as many times as possible since we didn't do an actual groundbreaking before they turned dirt. We're going to do a groundbreaking reception at the visitor center, and then we'll have a grand opening when it's ready. But that's where uh, the county will put Germana for its uh, temporary site until we find a campus with about 20 acres. And I, I want the county attorney to know I'm not asking for a proffer of 20 acres because I know she would say that's wrong. So I'm not asking for a proffer of 20 acres from anybody. Is that okay? Thank you. But if one comes, I'll be happy to accept it. That, okay. Um, <laughs> on the other note, um, I, I spoke to the chairman before, and, and he said it was okay. I, I'm going to work with Mr. Cully to reestablish the technology committee. We've got a web demo coming for the county's website, redesign the radio system. And we're going to try to put an RFP out for broadband. So we want to get as many folks in that. And uh, 
last but not least, I, I think I want to reiterate that, that our prayers are out to the families that were involved in the tragedy this weekend. Um, not only is one life lost, but basically there's going to be at least two lives lost. So we really think that's a tragedy upon a tragedy, and we have to make sure that we don't let this young man's death be in vain. Um, we have to have an end to all this senseless violence. We really, it's, it's just to me crazy to hate somebody based on where they live. It's just as crazy to hate them on how, how they look. So um, on that note, again, the youth program that the minister, that the young minister spoke about is April 11th, 12 to 6 at Oxford, Mount Zion. And I know we don't have another board meeting. I think that we're going to have a representative here. But that's something I think we need to do to help. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that opportunity. Yes. Mr. Black. Yeah, I've just got a couple. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first of all, the county attorney, uh, as well as uh, the citizens of Carolina who came out over the last um, two hearings. It was two different hearings in uh, regards to Aqua Virginia's rate increases, one for the surcharge and then uh, one for the rate increase. So we had about, between the two sessions, around 130 to 140 people, about 50 speakers here. Um, at the meeting um, and so the hearing examiner heard kind of the true stories of what the people are going through um, in the different subdivisions in Caroline um, facing those uh, water and sewer bills. I guess the next question I have would be for Mr. Fincham. So I guess it's more of a question for Mr. Fincham if you don't mind. I have a, in my district I have, there's a property that I'm having an issue with as yes, far sir. as, um, and I know it's not zoned residential, it's zoned, you know, the, I guess it's outside in the Childsburg area. Um, it's right next to the grocery store. It doesn't look good. I know we've sent the letters uh, last summer. What can, it's in total disrepair as far as the, 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 the lawn area. I'm not sure of the structure itself, but I'm not sure the store really likes seeing that. Um, and so what can we do as a county to kind of, I guess make the lawn come down three feet. As we discussed, we're going to go knock on the door of the property owner in question. But under county code and under state law, it is not something that we can cite them for a violation. Tall grass, unless it is zoned uh, uh, for residential, business, or uh, industrial or in a subdivision such as a Belmont or some other subdivision such as that, uh, it, it does not fall under our property maintenance code. So it's trying to cajole them, appeal to them. Even if it's in close proximity to a, a grocery store that's trying to sell food un, products? Un, under the county code, it is not a violation. How, yeah, that's a good question. How do we amend the county code? <laughs> uh, the county code is based on state law. So we can go back and, and revisit state law to see if there have been any changes. Uh, I'm not aware of any, but certainly we can revisit that. I, yeah, if we can, could you mm -hmm. look at that? Because it's, yes, sir. I, I mean, the, the people out there are complaining, and it just, you know, it just doesn't look good. And I feel bad for the store. As far I understand. as people see it as soon as they drive into that store. I understand. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Underwood. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just one. Certainly I echo um, Mr. Thomas's comments regarding the incident that occurred over the weekend. It was, um, I went to Second Mount Zion on Sunday, and certainly um, the other young man that was there was also, um, during the shooting was also there. And just, um, heart-wrenching time and I just would appeal to all of the citizens to let's really join together and, and see what we can do to help help our youth this is a, an awful time where social media has really plays a large part in their lives and rumors spread and animosity spread so quickly and although we had several hundred people at the vigil on yesterday some of the children that we need to reach weren't there. They were off in their neighborhood, maybe not really caring or not really understanding the magnitude of what's taking place. Certainly want to give a kudos to the 
uh, sheriff's department and our EMS folks are responding and doing all their part. And I do have one more comment. I want to thank Mr. Whiteman um, for all of his services. I, I called Kevin about a situation I had today, and we met, and he resolved it in a matter of an hour. So it had been ongoing. So I, I, I just appreciate that, and I'm hoping that we all can realize and understand that we're here to give service to the citizens of Caroline County, and that's what we are here for. And that's the only reason that we are here, is to make sure we're of good service. So I appreciate that to the, Mr. Whiteman and to the Sheriff's Office. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Akers? No, sir. Mr. Seeley? I would just also like to reiterate, I have a constituent meeting Thursday at 6 o'clock at Salem Baptist Church. Um, look forward to seeing the folks that come, and we will talk about the budget and schools. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. You're welcome. Uh, I would also uh, like to reiterate uh, uh, the board's concern for the unfortunate situation over the weekend, as has been said, and especially like to thank those board members who came out to the visual. Uh, Mr. Thomas was there, and, and so was Mr. Underwood and myself. And, uh, and even if you couldn't come, I'm sure your prayers and hearts were there. So uh, I think the board was very well represented there. And uh, we're just, uh, just very sorry. And certainly anything that the board can do uh, to address this issue. And, and I think we are trying to do some things. I, I was thinking about the 18th of April, I thought, was uh, something uh, dealing with gang violence. Uh, uh, a young man came and made a presentation. And, uh, or, or is it the 11th? I'm sorry. Maybe I had the wrong date. I thought it was the 18th that they were having the gang violence. The 11th, okay, I'm sorry. It's the 11th of April. And the board had committed to doing what it could to be supportive of that. And hopefully we can do something with in, in, in uh, conjunction with law enforcement and any other clergy or anyone in the county to try and help address the situation that involves our youth. Uh, also, I would uh, like to say we uh, uh, attended the Farm Bureau dinner, uh, which was very good. The board was represented there. And on Friday night, Project Faith at the uh, Town Hall, which is a new set of apartments opening in the county. And uh, it was a very good program. The board was uh, well represented there as well. Uh, and finally, I too have uh, district meetings coming up. <laughs> like Mr. Thomas and, and Mr. Uh, Seeley, I have one on Thursday. So if you don't want to go to theirs, you can come to mine. <laughs> It'll be at the Upper Caroline at 7 o'clock on Thursday. And then I have another one in Port Royal on the 30th, which is Monday at 7 o'clock. So um, citizens uh, can't say that they don't have an opportunity to be aware of what's going on because you, you don't necessarily have to go to the one that's your district because we all try to hit on the same things uh, and we try to keep the citizens aware and we try to give them an opportunity to come out and dialogue with us and that's the purpose of these meetings. So they are available and certainly the one that's convenient for you is the one that you probably need to attend. Having said that, we'll move on to uh, presentations and reports under agenda item one, the Richmond 2015 UCI Road World Cycling Championship. Uh, Mr. Tim Miller, Chief Operating Officer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Um, I'm here representing the 2015 UCI Road World Championships, which will be in, the, in Central Virginia in September of this year, the 19th to the 27th, uh, and seeking your support uh, for that event. This is one of the premier cycling events in the world, right up there with the Tour de France and the Olympic Games, and frankly, one of the premier sporting events in, in the world in general. Uh, and uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background of what the event is. Um, it is a nine-day event uh, that features 12 different world championship races. 
There are about 1,000 athletes uh, that will compete in the event, representing over 70 countries from around the globe. <clears throat> there are, we are anticipating somewhere in the neighborhood of 450,000 spectators uh, that will attend this event. And, and to be clear, because there's sometimes some confusion in the media about this 450,000 number, that is 450,000 people over the course of the entire nine days, and that does include the local population that will attend the event. Uh, so to, to be clear, there aren't 450,000 people that are coming here from outside of the, of the region. Uh, this event also has an enormous global television audience uh, in the hundreds of millions. It typically ranges somewhere between 100 and 300 million people worldwide that watch this event on TV. Uh, I also want to mention the economic impact from uh, this event, which is uh, frankly what most people are interested in when, when talking about this. This, and we say this uh, in-house all the time, this is not about a bike race. Uh, this is about tourism. This is about economic impact. This is about exposure of the region to uh, a national and international audience that can benefit all of us. Uh, the economic impact uh, statewide is estimated to be almost $160 million. Uh, and there's, there's opportunity, which I will uh, get to, for, for everybody to partake in that. Uh, we have plans to hold one of our races on Wednesday, September the 23rd uh, from Kings Dominion. Uh, and heading south down into uh, the finish line in downtown Richmond. Uh, that obviously includes uh, some, some roadway in Caroline County uh, on Route 30 and on Route 301 uh, that would require a complete road closure for the duration of that race. Uh, the race is scheduled to start at 1 p.m. and will last for about three and a half hours until 3.30 that afternoon. Uh, and an hour before the race start, it will be necessary for uh, law enforcement to begin shutting down and securing that roadway. So it's really from 12 o'clock until about 3.30 in the afternoon when a road closure would be required. Um, this is the men's professional individual time trial uh, that will take place that day. It is one of the higher profile events uh, on the schedule. Um, what uh, I would like to, what, what I am here to uh, propose today in seeking your support is uh, that, that we partner with Caroline County and that in, in recognition of hopefully your support for the event, uh, that we provide some things back to the county in the form of Mentions on, on the television broadcast, mentions on our website, uh, integrating your hotel properties into our uh, hotel inventory and showcasing those to the people that will be coming here looking for some place to stay while they're here during the event uh, and showcasing your tourism sites. There are a lot of people that will be coming from all over the world that will be very interested in the history throughout this region and, and we can help uh, direct them to some things in, in Caroline County and, and other places, frankly. Um, so with that, uh, I'm happy to answer your questions uh, and hopefully have answers. Okay. Does board members have questions for Mr. Miller at this time? Okay. I guess I'm just curious okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. that um, the state fair, I believe, will be open that same week. Are you all aware that you'll be closed from probably 1 to like, what, 3 o'clock? Correct. And we have been working closely with the State Fair officials on, they have, they have load in that day for their vendors. And right. so there is coordination around that to accommodate their load in as well as the race activity. I'm just glad they're here so they can nod their head, yes, they're aware. Because when I read this, it's like, what are the State Fair dates? I think this is right in the middle. Um, so you're all aware, because I know that it can cause a great deal of confusion, folks trying to get off a of 90. And I guess that's the other question. How will you handle the folks that are trying to get off a of 95? Will you close the on-ramp? I guess that's a question for Major Mosier or for the sheriff. <laughs> Mr. We, Nelson shaking his head no. 
We, we will not be closing any ramps off of Interstate 95, no. Okay. Um, okay. I, I guess I'm just, that's sort of my standing question on that is how that'll, because I'm sure that's the first thing that we're going to hear about is they can't get off. That they can't get off Folks, the interstate. I mean, if you close, yeah, I'm just that's why I'm just curious about the road closure at, right there because you've got King. I take it you're going to stage at King's Dominion and start there. That's correct. And the road closure, so people will be able to exit off of the interstate. Uh, they, they will not be able to go beyond uh, the King's Dominion property because we will come out of King's Dominion at that. Um, at the easternmost exit out of King's Dominion and then head east on Route 30 and proceed down Route 30 to 301 where we will then take a right and head south on 301. So there will be a traffic uh, diversion that will have to occur. People will be able to exit off of the interstate, but they will not be able to proceed all the way down Route 30 to Route 301. Yeah. Did you want to add to that? Uh... That is correct. Uh, you can get off the interstate, but you're going to either have to turn around and go right back to Route 1. You cannot go down 30. 30 will be closed. Not only will 30 be closed, but a lot of the citizens will be landlocked. Right, I was going to say. That live on 30 and 301. There has been some allowances for cross traffic right there at Meadow Farm Road. Uh, the chief here has some maps and stuff for the board to review. So um, we have made, we got with Mark Irving with VDOT, and there's been quite a quite a bit of planning for this event coming up. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't hear about it until tonight or whenever you got briefed. But uh, we've been planning for some time and asked them to come up here and speak to you, the board, to, so you would know about it. Um, but it was going to take quite a few officers to pull this event off from the sheriff's office. We estimate about 22 officers for the four-hour period. Uh, we not only do we have to deal with the closure of each roadway, but we also have to deal with the detour. So all the traffic coming from 301 south from Bowling Green area, well, we'll have to divert over through the county, and they are going to allow us to come out on Ruth Glen Road and then turn and go towards 95. <coughs> Scott, no, no, we're not. Are, are, are you being reimbursed by the cycling? For all your overtime? I, I was uh, hoping that that would be a part of the issue of tonight, what they're willing to do to compensate the county okay. for the manpower. You, well, well, first of all, you're not going to just donate 40 hours or whatever. 88 hours. 88? Oh, no. With 22 officers. Oh, no. So I think that's part of what he's trying to say is the advertising for the motels and hotels and stuff of that nature. But there is going to be a roughly a... What I've computed is about a three thousand or thirty-one hundred dollar cost for us, just for our law enforcement purposes. And the chief, I'm sure he has also computed the cost is because he's got to have his unit staged for this event and stuff of that nature. So, okay. Um, if I could call everybody's attention, Tim Hardy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. To the third page in your packet, um, and this is the the VDOT's draft um, traffic control plan or TCP. And we'll start right there in the middle at 301 and 30, and just talk about this. If you're traveling down 30 and you're going to the west on 30, you'll be routed up Old Dawn, all the way up to Concord, down Concord to Signboard Road. Signboard Road, you'll be allowed to go back on 30 west in the westbound lane and the westbound lane only. You'll be able to go from Signboard Road into Meadow Event Park if you need to or back to 95 if you need to. Traffic coming off of 95 or 30 going east will be stopped before you get to King's Dominion with a hard blockade, hard closure. The racers themselves will be coming out of KD and they'll be traveling in the uh, eastbound lane of 30 going to the 301 and down 301. If we go back to the intersection at 30 and 301, and we look at going south on 301, the next page, you'll see Mount Gideon Road. Uh, that section will be blocked off. There will be a way for the residents in Mount Gideon Road to get out of that uh, <coughs> blocked area by going to Baylor Road 
right there and crossing over and getting into the other side on 301. If you go back to the second page again, everybody that's in this tier between Meadow Farm and 301 South will be able to get out. You'll be getting out Meadow Farm Road. It'll be a law enforcement controlled intersection. You will be able to get out and you will be able to only go 30 westbound. Again, this is only for a period of about three hours during the day. Um, for us in fire rescue and law enforcement, we, law enforcement's come up with the number of officers they're going to need to enforce that traffic control plan, as well as the race itself. Again, this is just preliminary, as well as fire rescue. We know we need to put some fire rescue assets in that middle section to protect our citizens first, uh, spectators and riders as well. Um, both of our numbers are indicated um, on the first page. It's our flow chart for the command and control of this event. And you see the numbers uh, of staff that will be required to the right. Okay. Chief, okay. Um, so is there, a, is there a financial cost to the county for this? And if so, how, how is that being addressed? For, for fire rescue, I can answer that. There is a the cost for us to provide those resources to it. Um, that's why I think Mr. Miller is here to explain that to you. My cost... You know, I can figure overtime for all those people. Uh, at the same time, we'll intermix volunteers in there, so I'm not sure what the actual cost would be. Uh, if I take a look at my numbers and my staff and salary, we're looking at about $2,400 of what it would cost to pay everybody. You don't pay me. You don't pay Mark. You don't pay Ricky. All of those office staff would be down there supporting this to keep that overtime threshold as low as possible. We've got some volunteers committed to staffing engines on those days uh, because it is a big event, and I think we'll get a good draw. Um, the total dollar figure for me is hard to figure, but we're using all of our office staff that don't occur overtime to, to help support the event. Mr. Miller, would you like to address that? Yeah, I, we are uh, happy to talk about the, the cost to the county and what we might uh, need to do to overcome that. Uh, as I said earlier, I was hoping that we might be able to look at this as a partnership, but if that's not the case, then we will certainly... Uh, we will certainly sit down and discuss those costs and, and what we need to do to, to overcome that. Okay. And I guess I don't know how the board uh, would like to address this issue or not, but you know, I really wasn't quite aware until I saw this just what the impact was to the county. So, uh, Mr. Thomas, you have, I'm sorry, I, I believe Mr. Uh, Underwood had a question first. Though. Well, not just the. I'm looking at the, the residents who are landlocked down 30. Once you come out of the gate and make a left, you've got um, at least 10 houses on the right side of the road who are landlocked who can't even get out of their own driveway. And then once you make the right turn going down thir uh, 301 South, they would have to come all the way back down. No, 23 houses? 23 driveways. 23, yeah. I, I, I think we need to consider the impact and have a discussion with those citizens. Well, and yes, absolutely. And, and part of our process, as we do in the city of Richmond, in Henrico County and Hanover County, and we would here as well, is we have a significant outreach campaign where we go door to door, we do direct mail, uh, we do other communications to uh, let everyone know what's going to occur and give them an opportunity to express concerns so that we can... Uh, address those concerns and try to mitigate them. But there is an extensive outreach plan that would go along with this. I certainly hope so, because um, right now... Mr. Okay. Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Miller, our director of school transportation just happens to be in the audience, and 3 o'clock is school bus time. So surely... We have to get those kids home. We can't just leave them on the side of the road and say in three hours you can get to your house. Something has to be done about that. Yes, what, sir. What do you propose? Well, we would want to sit down and look at those specifically and come up with a, a strategy around that. I can tell you that uh, the, the race, the, the last rider will leave King's Dominion, and this is a projection, but around 2.30. So as that last rider leaves King's Dominion and travels down the course, the road can begin to reopen behind that rider. So okay. 
we need to look at the timing of that and the timing of the buses and figure out what the actual impact is. Okay, well, we'll I'm sure we'll work with, with the schools to make sure we do that. The other thing which you may not be aware of is, is you talked about the economic impact being what, what did you say, $450 million? No, it's, it's uh, $158 million. $158 million. Yes. Okay. Caroline will get none of that money. Um, we do not have any businesses along that corridor that will necessarily take advantage of that because when you leave Kings Dominion and make a right turn, there's nothing until you get to 30. I mean, I mean um, 301, and then there's one or two small places on 301. So our economic impact will probably be significantly less than what you're thinking, which is why I was kind of adamant about the sheriff's office not volunteering their hours. I, I understand that the, the slice of the economic impact uh, is not necessarily substantial. Insignificant was the word I used. Okay. <laughs> insignificant. Uh, I did have a conversation with your tourism coordinator who uh, was very excited about the opportunity of integrating Caroline County into this event and the opportunity to showcase hotels and restaurants and other tourism sites. Uh, and, and that is something that uh, I think we are, we are prepared to do. I, I understand that it's insignificant, perhaps. Um, but I would also argue that this is a once-in-a-lifetime event for this region that uh, there is potential for everybody to gain something from. Well, I'm sure before we approve that, you'll, you'll be able to convince everyone that there's something to be gained. Yes, sir. Are there other questions? Mr. Black. Mr. Wilson, can you speak to that for us for a second? I'll just... Yes, sir. I guess, you know, Mr. Thomas had just brought up a, you know, a point, and I was just kind of seeing if you, what your, just kind of curious is, what, what, is it insignificant? What is, I mean, how is, how is this going to be sold to Caroline County? I guess that's the question. I, I think the, the, um, the question has, has two different ways to be answered. One, would it be monetarily immediately recognized as a boon for the county to have this event? staged in the southern half of the community and the answer probably is not a great one at all uh, we're hoping that there would be people who take care take advantage of the hotels uh, that sort of thing uh, I, we're going to see mostly that to our south um, but there is some chance we can get tot out of it certainly not enough to compensate for the uh, overtime that we're being that's being described here today um, i do think it is a positive for us in that we get marketing recognition. And in the long term on that is virtually impossible to tell you what it would be. But the more recognition we have in the world, the more people know we're here, see our towns, know about our towns, our history, and so forth, the chances they'll come back. Tourism's all about small businesses or local businesses selling things ultimately. So when that happens in the long term, it may be a benefit to us. Uh, I can't quantify that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Other board members? Is the State Fairground a television site for that event by any chance? Uh, no, sir, it is not. Okay. Now, having said that, there are, so there are three different types of television cam uh, cameras that are used during this event. There are fixed cameras. There are cameras on the back of motorcycles that are following the racers as they travel along the road. And then there are helicopter cameras. Uh, so I, I can tell you that uh, the Meadow Event Park will be featured in the broadcast at some point uh, through either the helicopter shots or uh, through those motorcycle cameras. And I can also tell you that you know the the story of Secretariat will be of great interest to the television audience. The we are the organizing committee for the event. We are also what's known as the host broadcaster, which means we produce the television broadcast for everyone around the world and we provide talking points to all the broadcasters. If you've ever watched the Tour de France on TV, and I don't know if any of you have, but uh, it's not by accident that when they're showing the, the Tour de France and a helicopter is hovering over some castle in the middle of the French countryside, 
They know exactly what the name of that castle is, who lived there, and what the history of that castle was. That's part of the opportunity that exists, is to provide the broadcasters with a storyline that they can tell the world. What was, it, what was this event held last year? Where? Where? Yes. In Spain. In Spain? So last year it was in uh, Ponferrada, Spain, the year before, before that. that. It was in Florence, Italy. The year before that it was in the Limburg region of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, the year before that it was in Copenhagen. So this Denmark. is, has there, have you had this event in the United States? It has not been in the United States since 1986 when it was held in Colorado Springs. That's what okay. I was saying. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller, is that right? Yes. Okay. I would uh, certainly thank you for your information, but would like to ask that certainly along with Mr. Wilson, and I, I would suspect law enforcement, um, Mr. Cully as well, to get together. Uh, I, I'm sure it's a great event, and I don't want it to sound uh, like it's not. But I think the board just wants to be certain that um, it, it, it does not create an inconvenience uh, toward the citizens. I'm certainly concerned for the most about those citizens that live down on 30 uh, and the impact that this uh, is going to have. I'm sure it's a great event, but I'm not sure that those citizens who can't get into their driveways will be as excited as some of us who are far removed from it. Um, I want to make certain that it does not impact negatively on the police department and fire and rescue and the other entities that are going to be needed in order to make this uh, a successful uh, venture. So hopefully with those people I named and you uh, can get together and come up with methods and ways that the impact will be positive. Yes. Mr. Akers, did you have a question? If you, if you would. It's my understanding that this board can say, we can sit up here and, and, and whine about what is going to take place and what's going to happen, but we're not going to stop the process. We're not going to stop the event. Uh, I think this event is much larger than what Caroline County Board is. Well, well, you well can... I know that all board members think that way. Okay, uh, is the fact that, and that's what I want to know. Are we going to be able to, if the majority of this board says, no, nah, we don't want to come in through Caroline, is that going to make a difference? Well, absolutely. You all, you all control the. Oh, so, so you're saying if the majority of the people in Car or on this board says they don't want it, then you'll go another route? Well, we will have to, yes, sir. Okay. I mean, you're, what, what you're, are we talking about? $5,500? Is that, is that the number we've talked about total? 24 on your behalf and 31 on your. Six or seven thousand dollars, something like that. We throw six or seven thousand dollars. Okay. Well, Mr. Mr. Colley first. Uh, Mr. Colley. Uh, no, members of the board, uh, all, most of these road closure permits come to my desk to sign after they've gone to the state police and the sheriff's office, and I have informed of the, both VDOT and uh, Mr. Bell, I wasn't going to sign a road closure permit to close down that much of that into the county unless the board authorized me to do so. So whether that stops it or not, because obviously the governor could close the road, but I just want you to know, I want y'all's blessing that you want 30 and 301 closed for four hours and that the public will be inconvenienced with that. I wasn't going to put my name on it without y'all knowing about it. The, the money issue is just another, another side to that, and, and clearly the offer of, of advertisements and, and TV exposure and, and things for even the town of Bowling Green, the arts, the Sydney King Arts Center. There's some things that we could certainly be nice to have some, some advertising on. May offset the expenses that, that we'll have from both the sheriff and, and, the, and the fire department. But beyond that, I didn't want to sign a road closure and then your, your constituents, Mr. Underwood, be uh, upset that they couldn't get in and out of their driveway for a four-hour period. I, even with all the notification in the world, if somebody decides they've got to go at that particular time, uh, and, and they're going to be upset that they can't. So that, that's sort of where I was at uh, uh, with, the, with the board. So um, just looking for your direction as to whether you want me to sign that permit when it comes my way. Right. Once, once again, 
uh, for me, Mr. Cully, and the rest of the board, is again about the inconvenience of the citizens. So I think we need to have a conversation. If they support it, I mean, you'd like to see if you've got 23 houses there that, that, we're, that are going to be inconvenienced without ingress or egress for four hours. So we need to have, a, have that conversation before I can say I'm going to support you. I want to hear from the people who put me in this seat to say, yeah, we can support this. We can live with the four hours of inconvenience. We appreciate you bring it to our attention. But I'm not going to sit here and say, I can appreciate all the, the impact and possible economic impact that it can have. And I appreciate that. And we want to be friendly to every business that can come to the county, every entity that can shed something positive about Caroline County. We absolutely want that. But I want to make sure we're all on the same page. We're dancing to the same music so that no one can say, I didn't get a chance to have my my, my voice heard. Yeah, and we're happy to conduct a, a town hall meeting and invite all those residents to come and hear directly from us what the plans are and what the impact will be and, and let them voice their concerns and, and let you all make a decision based on the outcome of that town hall I, meeting. I think that would be best. I think that would be the way to go. Then, then I'll be there with you and we can discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Other questions, comments? If not, thank you, Mr. Muller. We appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to the second agenda item, the VDOT report. Um, Mr. Nelson. Hey, new members of the board. Just wanted to um, touch base with you all regarding the recent closure of Route 606 and to provide some updates on that and to two of the other bridge projects that we have been talking about in the county. I'll first start with um, Route 721 Newtown Road. That bridge is actually slated to be closed on March 30th for us to install the temporary structure. It will be closed from March 30th to Monday, April the 20th. And at that point in time, we'll have a structure in place, a one-way structure with signals to maintain traffic on Route 721 until the bridge can be um, totally replaced. The project is slated to begin in June of 2016. Um, Route 606 was closed recently and we've gone and I had a discussion with Mr. Cully and Mr. Taylor on Friday and we've come up with the plan to have the bridge reopened by December, not by December, but in December of 2015. Um, we found some additional money from another project to try to work this project sooner or later, which will delay that project. And that project is Route 722. So Route 722 will be delayed a year, but we're going to try to find money to try to get that project done too. Um, with Route 606, we feel that we can advertise the project in June and we'll have the road back open in December. There was another route we could have chosen, which would have been with stage construction, which would have been a longer timeline and it would have cost a whole lot more money in order to do that project. And we're talking about having a nine month duration now, the bridge being closed and having a totally replaced structure by De in December of 2015. Whereas if we had went with the temporary structure, we would have had the bridge closed from now until July of 2015. And we would have had um, MOT and temporary signalization of that bridge to have one way access across that bridge from August of 2015 through January of 2018. So it would have been a longer duration because of the funding associated with it and with stage construction there are environmental concerns in that body of water that we would have to contend with with time of year restrictions for doing work. So we felt that having the road closed and having it totally complete and out the way in December 2015 was the best route to go. So at this point in time, that's where we stand with that project. And as I indicated, Route 722, we went out and we did a recent inspection on that bridge. It is in nowhere near as in bad a condition as Route 606, but we are posting that structure. It was not posted. It will be posted at 24 and 34 tons on Route 722 for single axle and for double axle. Board members have questions for Mr. Nelson. I do, if, Mr. I'm, if I may. I just 
just happened to have been next to an 18-wheeler today, and it was 80,000 pounds. So that's 40 tons. Mm -hmm. So there will be no 18-wheelers that will go across 722, is what you're saying when you post it? With that posting, yes. So they'll have to use what will be a detour? Yes. Okay. So instead of um, starting that project in, in 1215, as, as we talked about a couple of months